Hello, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are. I am uh, presenting this video from Melbourne. So this is morning here. Um, so it is my pleasure to be uh, speaking on this uh, uh, conference. It's an important conference and very topical. And uh, I'm really grateful to the organizer especially CIDC to reach out to me and uh, requesting me to present on this very important topic. So the topic uh, given to me to present in this conference is uh, still in construction towards sustainable infrastructure development. So there are quite a few topics uh, given to me. Uh, among those topics, I have actually picked up three topics, uh, rural and urban housing for all, role of architects, designers for still in intensive buildings, sustainability of steel by green architect so i am professor hemanto doloi i also direct uh, smart villages lab at the university of melbourne and my email address if you wanted to write to me uh, hdoloi at unimelb.edu.au So um, when I talk about sustainability uh, and sustainable infrastructure, uh, this is very important to understand. What is the sustainability uh, here? What is the meaning of sustainability? So it is there are many different uh, means. There are many different ways of defining sustainability. But in our case, I just wanted to quickly go to the uh, go to one of the very important references, uh, which is the UNDP's um, Sustainable Development Goals. So within the UNDP Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 goals defined. And this, if we can collectively get all these goals um, uh, fulfilled for any interventions that we have got, whether this is sustainable, whether this is an infrastructure or any other um, intervention that we are doing for the uh, community, uh, we can precisely say that sustainability has been met. But um, then if you look at basically uh, uh, each of the uh, goal here in terms of the definition and their um, uh, intent, uh, essentially all the goals are, um, you know, uh, converging to one single um, uh, objective, which is basically that we need to really uh, look into uh, the sustainable um, uh, practice across all the areas of uh, community development. Um, so housing, uh, and infrastructure is a big provision. This is very important for any community. And I think uh, these goals uh, more or less also uh, reflect on that as well. So I think I will just go into that. And one of the important uh, issues that I will be touching on here is basically community development, rural development, and the uh, role of steel in terms of infrastructure, uh, and then um, of course the sustainable um, um, practice. So why I talked about the rural um, rural community? The reason is that um, I have been working uh, over uh, last four years or so uh, in this very important area of uh, smart villages research. And smart villages is all about basically rural empowerment, looking at more about the uh, rural community rather than the urban community. There has been many um, uh, theories, many uh, lots of work has been uh, uh, done in the urban uh, areas. And when it comes to actually, uh, you know, um, any new development, any infrastructure, the first thing that comes to our mind is the um, urban. But question here is that uh, in this uh, planet of uh, one point, almost 8 billion people, uh, until today, there are 40% or more people still lives in uh, rural areas. And these rural areas uh, are basically confined to some very, uh, very few countries, like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and um, Africa, and uh, Africa, African countries, and, and so on. Uh, but yet, I think this is very important that this 40% uh, or so population uh, needs to be uh, addressed in terms of their uh, infrastructure need in their modern, modernization uh, provisions and, and so on and so forth. And in the context of India alone, uh, as you know that Indian government has given lots of priorities in terms of uh, rural infrastructure, rural empowerment and uh, and uh, you know things like that so there are many uh, 
uh, lots of public money has been spent uh, for that sort of um, uh, initiative and i think this is very important that we do it something um, from the research pers uh, you know properly with uh, evidence based uh, research uh, support that is very important and as an academic at the university of melbourne that is what i do i i i'm an expert in research i i i'm i teach and i grow knowledge uh, through research and my current area of research is more about uh, the rural focus as i said so within the smart villages context, uh, we have got the smart villages lab, which is established for this purpose only. So we have been looking at more about the rural housing, rural infrastructure, rural economy, uh, smart governance and sustainability uh, generally. So uh, and I originally came from uh, a state called Assam in India. And uh, this particular work has actually started in Assam. The reason is that I have got um, connections in Assam, and I really wanted to, uh, you know, help out in uh, in the uh, rural community in Assam, and also uh, more. Uh, and I speak the same language. I came from the same culture. This is much easier to do some uh, work uh, in the uh, rural communities um, back in Assam. So over the last four years, when I have, I was working in this particular uh, field. Yeah, I have done quite a lot of uh, work in terms of uh, supporting the government uh, with the new knowledge that is required for, uh, you know, the rural development. Um, and one of the important things that I have done in addition to my own research is uh, establishing that international conference on smart villages and rural development called COSBARD. And this is the third time running this conference annually. Uh, and we also try to get um, policymakers and academia around the world just to you know come along and uh, share their research and other um, uh, you know theories and practices uh, in this particular area so uh, as i said that uh, over last uh, uh, four years when i was working on this uh, area um, out of uh, government of assam uh, assam support um, i have been able to really uh, look at uh, some of the very important uh, practices around the world in terms of rural development uh, and um, rural housing and infrastructure uh, and then we try to also bring some of the existing knowledge uh, in the context of smart villages what how the existing knowledge can be put together in the context of developing the smart villages and this is this is one of the books that we have written and covered lots of uh, international practices and quite customized to uh, some areas in um, india and assam uh, in particular so you can see here there are 10 different uh, 12 different chapters and every single chapter actually talks about um, what needs to be done in the context of developing the rural communities uh, in in smart villages and if you look at these 12 areas they are no different from the um, uh, sustainability goals UNDP sustainability goals uh, that I have shown you um, that 17 goals so uh, quite a lot uh, of those um, uh, goals are also addressed in this book as well so that is where actually we are uh, addressing the sustainability in this particular context and our second book uh, also we have written here um, uh, why the slide is not moving This is another book that we have written here uh, about the affordable housing. As you can see, this is more about the shelter and the house uh, for the smart villages. Again, very much local uh, in a rural context. And again, we have got quite a lot of uh, understanding about how the houses should be designed, how the houses um, should be perceived by the community, and how we can actually take the community along with uh, the policymakers and architects uh, to make sure that the, the houses are 100% socially inclusive. Uh, to give to build a house uh, it is very important that we need to understand who are going to live in the house and whether these people are going to call this house as a home and uh, they are happy with uh, their needs and the requirements so these um, things if you are not aligning well uh, in from the very outset uh, the houses uh, could be um, um, you know considered as not quite um, uh, you know uh, conducive for a family uh, who is going to be the end a, a beneficiary of the house at the end so it is very important so we need to understand the house uh, from very many different aspects uh, like um, you know the culture and um, affordability and 
the material usage, the, the space planning inside and outside, and so on and so forth. Resilience, sustainability, uh, and um, and uh, vulnerability, and all these elements are important in terms of designing a house. So this is our second book that we have gone a bit more deeper in terms of um, housing for smart villages. And most importantly, as I said, our this particular work initially was supported by the government of Assam. And uh, because of that, uh, we had an obligation from our research lab to be able to bring all this knowledge in the context of Assam. So based on these two books and additional uh, field work that we have done in Assam, uh, we have also written a policy documentation as well uh, for the government of Assam to be able to use this policy for developing the um, and the rural communities in in Assam, and I'll I'll talk more about Assam and the work that we have done uh, over the next few slides. But this is what basically uh, so far uh, we have achieved in this particular um, uh, program. And as you can see, this uh, you know cover page on this uh, framework uh, policy framework, you can see that there's there 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 we are using steel uh, for uh, some of the. Um, you know, particular houses in Assam, which are in the flood prone areas, uh, to be able to modernize them. So, steel is definitely uh, uh, one of the you know considerations here, and I will explain more about uh, you know in what context we are trying to use the steel uh, in in those um, uh, settings. So, that is what my um, uh, presentation is going to be over the next um, uh, you know 10 minutes or so. So, talking about Assam. Uh, many of you might know that uh, Assam is one of the uh, states in India, in northeastern part of India, and uh, Assam is basically connected uh, with the mainland India with a chicken neck, um, uh, as you can see, and that, um, you know, the red part is Assam, and Assam is also surrounded by seven other states, um, and we call all together as, as eight sister states in, in the northeast. So, uh, the Smart Villages program started there, as I said, and uh, when, we start, when we started the program from Assam, um, then, of course, uh, we had to uh, do some field work in Assam um, there. So, Assam is a place of uh, 35 million people uh, uh, population, and uh, out of 35 million, about 28 million people, which is over 86 percent, uh, people live in rural areas, very rural. Some of the areas are uh, so rural that you know there is no, not enough connectivity from the main, mainland. So, uh, and also Assam has got lots of other natural calamities including flood which i'll talk as well uh, so yeah, these people are really poor and rural so this is important that we understand something uh, in that um, uh, in that um, uh, space to be able to bring our scientific knowledge bring our um, you know uh, technological interventions uh, to the benefit of those community and this is a large community as, as i'm saying and india alone uh, also has um, a, a large uh, population living in rural as well. So this is important that not only in Assam, but also in the Indian context, this sort of research is very important. So uh, talking about Assam and the natural calamities that Assam um, suffers every year, uh, one of the natural calamities is the flood, as you know. Uh, Assam uh, receives about 5,000 millimeter rain um, um, every year and that uh, rain actually that much water uh, has to be drained out to the bay of bengal that is the only way that that means assam uh, acts as a catchment of that much water to be drained out um, to bay of bengal and the major catchment uh, channel is the river brahmaputra which is the widest river in the world uh, in some point river brahmaputra one bank to the other bank you cannot see this is 15 20 kilometers long and that is the reason why maybe uh, you you might know that you know a couple of recent bridges uh, were built uh, on river brahmaputra and one bridge that, that is called holakhodia bridge um, in upper assam is about uh, 12 kilometers or so long so these are the engineering marvel but that is required for that sort of uh, you know wide village uh, wide rivers so in assam what happens actually as i said when 5000 millimeter rain comes every year and this uh, rain has to this water has to be drained out to the bay of bengal and rainwater has to find their um, uh, you know uh, find find the uh, course of uh, drain and and this is what happens here so this could be as i said whole of assam is a catchment area because um, you know that much water to drain out requires a quite uh, you know large um, area of um, catchment and that is the reason why a, a large part of Assam gets inundated every year and as you can see that uh, these, these are the state of affairs today that these houses are built uh, on the catchment and uh, every now and then 
uh, when the rain comes uh, and monsoon season, these houses gets inundated and uh, property gets destroyed. So that means if we understand the nature, if we understand uh, that this is the natural phenomenon that Assam received that much rain, Assam uh, has to uh, you know, drain the water out to Bay of Bengal, uh, we could have planned properly, but so in up to, uh, unfortunately, up to a certain extent, uh, some of the plannings were not quite right. And that is the reason why these people are suffering today. And this is a um, common phenomena um, uh, many of you may have seen in um, uh, you know media uh, every uh, monsoon season that Assam gets very bad flood and uh, you know many houses are um, underwater and this is a common phenomena uh, every year it happens in Assam. So yes, I mean natural uh, calamities are there, but at the same time uh, this is not new. This this been there for many many. Uh, thousand years uh, always you know uh, that much water uh, falls and as you know Charapunji um, in Meghalaya is the um, highest rainfall um, uh, place in the world uh, so definitely you know there are reasons there are um, histories and that is how basically the rain falls in that area but then uh, then if we do not make our proper planning in terms of um, housing and infrastructure, which we call as sustainable infrastructure, so then that means this, uh, the, 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 you know, this, we are not able to address the natural calamities that we are talking about here. So that means, uh, you know, from that uh, perspective alone, that if we can build the infrastructure, if we can build the housing, uh, which are free from uh, flood, which can which, which can withstand the flood, and that is a sustainable uh, um, infrastructure from at least from the natural calamities point of view. So sustainability doesn't need any additional um, uh, you know uh, definition. Then I will be then talking more about the housing and the steel. That is the purpose, and I'm not going to deviate too much from there. But this is the context that I provided in the first place. So now, if you talk about um, uh, you know, uh, Assam and the, the natural calamities uh, happening every year, as I said, and this, uh, you know, houses are getting inundated and properties are, um, uh, you know, damaged. Uh, then if you see this bottom picture here, in fact, some of the houses uh, are, they are in the flood prone areas and this is uh, used by the people, the local people, and they, they have been there for many, many years. This is the culture. So there are people, as you can see, the left hand side, this house is uh, right on the uh, water body and the right hand side is another house on the stilt, but uh, not in the flood prone area. So uh, these are the houses that people do live. And they are, of course, the poor communities, but they are village communities, and these people exactly know how to live by the flood. So there were, um, you know, enough, uh, uh, you know, smartness among the people in terms of finding their uh, own solution that withstand the flood. And today also that is exist, you know, in Assam uh, across the valley of Himalaya, um, you can see lots of these houses exist. Um, and uh, they, they, these people are happy because they, they know exactly flood will come and go, and but they will rather use the flood for their living in terms of you know free free, free fishing and um, and so on and so forth. And the flood when it comes, uh, it brings uh, you know the you know the natural uh, uh, reverse uh, uh, silt uh, as a fertilizer. And actually after the uh, flood season, uh, these uh, villagers can get you know bumper uh, crop season. Uh, because without costing any money on their fertilizers. So this whole uh, valley of Himalaya, a uh, valley of Brahmaputra is, is very fertile land. Yeah, and, and then uh, on the right hand side, this particular house, uh, you know, they are on the flood prone areas. And uh, when, uh, you know, it's a lean period, dry period, they use actually uh, the, you know, uh, underneath their house uh, as their uh, storage, including uh, livestock. So pigs and uh, cows and, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, you know, chicken and, um, uh, you know, ducks, they use those, uh, you know, livestock, uh, you know, uh, 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 under the house. So they are smart and they, they have got uh, all purpose houses built, uh, you know, with the local material rather. So this is very smart solution, sustainable solution. But now uh, with uh, modern uh, age, we are actually trying to replace these houses with, with brick and mortar as you can see on the right hand side and that is where we are suffering more in terms of our property damage first of all these houses are expensive you know, brick and mortar houses are expensive and when they get flood of course uh, property get damaged 
So we need to really learn from nature, uh, nature and we need to also learn from the local knowledge. This is very important. So then when it comes to local knowledge and rural development and talking about very specifically about housing, that's what I'm now going to discuss about. What is the role of housing? How can we define and design the house? What is the role of practitioners and the architects? And how potentially we can use steel as our uh, uh, one of the structural elements uh, for modernizing those rural houses. So housing is a big problem in the region, no doubt, not only in Assam, but whole of uh, Northeast and also in India. Um, and then uh, shortages are there, but resilience and sustainability is important within the houses. So some of the houses that I have shown you, yes, they are good. Uh, people have used their um, uh, local skill to be able to uh, uh, you know, build those houses and uh, withstand the flood, but then not necessarily to be highly resilient or um, you know safe. Uh, so it is very important that when we modernize these houses, we look after um, those elements as well. So uh, that is the reason why Indian government has put lots of effort uh, uh, for a program like Housing for All, uh, which is um, uh, very important because they are definitely you know, modernizing some of the houses uh, for those rural communities and providing them with the uh, you know, modern lifestyle in a way. So definitely there are some uh, great plans, but not necessarily that all the plans are working effectively. So talking about the plans and the schemes, this is one of the major schemes, as many of you might know, uh, UNDP's um, design of Pahel uh, supporting the Prime Minister's uh, PMAY scheme in India. So that's been going on for going on for a long time. As you know, that India is now uh, building massive amount of housing, uh, uh, in unprecedented number of housing uh, for uh, with a with a with a mantra, the housing for all. So everybody has to have a proper house. But question here is that with that modernization, with that mass building of the houses, are we? really looking after the community's need are we looking after the vernacularism and culture and you know character of the houses and are we really uh, you know building the housing stock in a way that that will not only uh, you know retain values over time but also leave the, you know keep the characters of those uh, communities um, at large this is very important these are some of the areas that we have done through this program smart villages program some uh, important research and i'm going to share that, that in, uh, research findings with you so uh, talking about pahel uh, this is one of the um, uh, you know, uh, this is the um, uh, compendium that was given to the uh, to build the houses in India, and every single state in India uh, receives a very particular uh, housing model, uh, depending on the geographic uh, and um, other considerations by the UNDP um, expert team, no doubt. And when it comes to Assam, they have looked at some of the um, you know requirements within Assam. And they, what they have done actually, they have uh, you know broken the Assam into seven different, uh, sorry, five different zones: zone A to zone E. And uh, so within these uh, five different zones, they have been able to give five different housing uh, models uh, that is uh, you know going to be um, uh, purpose built for those areas. So no doubt there there is a good intention, but. Unfortunately, uh, some of those intentions are not quite uh, translating into the real uh, uh, real benefits. As you can see from here, I'm just going to take zone number three as an example. So zone number three is uh, the hilly, hilly area, uh, which is if you go from Guwahati to uh, Dibrugor to the, towards east, on the right hand side is the uh, Mikir Pahar, Mikir Hill, uh, which is the, uh, you know, bound, uh, uh, which is the, the border of uh, Nagaland. Uh, so there are, uh, you know, uh, huge uh, communities out there in the hilly area, and this hilly area is actually uh, characterized here as zone number three. And I'm just going to give you an example of what sort of houses were proposed in for zone number three, and how those houses are basically um, de developed uh, in that area. So this is one of the models of uh, zone number three and as you can see this is a uh, two bedroom rather three bedroom uh, a small house with uh, with a kitchen and a baranda at the front and baranda at the back so this is just a square uh, house uh, that was uh, there in UNDP as one of the pro one of the most um, uh, you know uh, useful and purpose-built um, plans for that particular zone but now 
if you look at in reality what these people have been receiving is something different again i'm just uh, not saying that you know these pictures that i have taken from assam are exactly from that location that zone but could be a, a bit of a disparity there but yet i'm saying that pm uh, ay scheme um, has delivered some of the houses of this kind in Assam. And as you can see, these houses are simply the brick and mortar uh, with, uh, um, you know, some basic, um, um, you know, uh, uh, amenities and, uh, and functions. So uh, these houses are not quite modernizing the people the way it should be uh, modernizing. The intent was good, but I don't think that uh, the products are good at this stage. Now, this is another house that you can see was built out of the PMAY uh, scheme. And this house uh, is rotting without even being, um, uh, you know, utilized. So you can see that someone has to build this house. And I don't know who are the contractors and who has given the authorities to build these houses. These are the, just uh, uh, trees, uh, brick wall, and uh, with some, um, you know, basic, um, you know, uh, doors and windows and um, uh, roof on the top. And that, that they call this one as a house for uh, this community which is given uh, under that public scheme which is for free now question here is that if you start building this kind of houses and this is another one so these houses i wanted to ask um, anyone uh, listening to this particular uh, talk that who how many of us are going to be happily taking this free shelter as our own house um, you know uh, to live there as our as our home so I think not many of us will take this one event is given for free because the reason is that these houses are not purpose built. They are they are they are they, they are not meeting any of the uh, purposes of a of a shelter. And uh, so because this is free, this is coming from the public scheme, and uh, this has to be built. Uh, so you are building it. So this is not how the houses should be modernized uh, for the rural community. The rural community has the dignity. They have got their own character. They, they have been living um, on their own way. So if we are modernizing those people, we'd rather modernize them from the existing uh, you know, knowledge of, of that community. We don't need to make sure that we take them on board uh, while we are building the houses for them so that it does not really um, you know, uh, deteriorate over time, and it rather retains the values and the uh, characters, and these houses becomes uh, an important stock uh, for not only for the community but generally. So this is very important that uh, we need to consider that. So this is another uh, example, as you can see, the old house was uh, uh, where that uh, you know the blue panels are, and then because they have got some money and free of cost, uh, you know the public schemes are being rolled out. So brick and mortar is coming. So they have decided to take some of the walls off and changing that to brick and mortar. So the, this is not how the houses should be built. And and when houses are built, um, uh, this this is not to be built by the people who do not have proper skill. So it, that is where that, that role of uh, architects and practitioners come into play. And this role of architects and the practitioners, they have to influence uh, the design in a way that uh, in the government uh, has, government is empowered, government has got the capacity to be able to build these houses, um, uh, you know, that reflects the character of the community and retains the value over time. And these houses are just, uh, you know, uh, not doing that at this stage. So, talking about Assam, uh, it is very important that we design the houses which are purpose built and which uh, are based on the evidence. So, it is very important. So, when we talk about uh, any particular community, we need to understand what that, what that community is and what sort of housing do they like and how they have been living there uh, for so many um, you know, uh, uh, centuries. Uh, and this is very important to understand that. And of course, I understand that for UNDP kind of design and for prime minister's uh, scheme, it is difficult to uh, do this, uh, you know, evidence-based, field-based uh, research and design something. But over the time, uh, we that is not an excuse. We need to still grow the knowledge and, um, you know, bring that sort of knowledge into the practice. So in Assam, uh, you know, there are about 300 unofficial tribes, but 115 official tribes. That's uh, a, you know, different community, different culture, different language, different food, uh, you know, food uh, and, and so on and so forth. So everything is different. So these people, uh, they live in smaller pockets and Assam is a, uh, is not a great, a, in a very big state, about 78,000 square kilometer uh, land area, but then, uh, uh, and these people, they, they live there in, in smaller pockets, as I said, maybe 25 
40 kilometer if you go from one end to the other uh, one one spot to the other then you might come across three different communities of that kind so they, these people are very important to understand and especially that zone three i'm talking about there are lots of uh, this kind of tribes tribal communities living there and they have got their own culture very unique culture and this is very important to understand that yeah in assam uh, 26,000 villages are there, and if you also look at India, about 600,000, 6 lakhs villages are there in India. So I think um, Indian villages are um, are really the uh, icing on the cake, uh, I, I would say, because uh, Indian villages are very unique and uh, across uh, the board, and these villages, uh, if we can retain and the value and the culture and the character it could be uh, one of our biggest assets in in long run in terms of people coming over uh, over to india and then witnessing that rural culture rural uh, character so not many part of the world has got that much character that india has today but if we do not retain them and if we simply modernize uh, those uh, houses with brick and mortar that i have shown the example uh, so what will happen you think about it that six lakhs villages will have that kind of brick and mortar houses and all the characters are gone at the end and then finally um, so uh, and these people neither has got any um, any um, uh, developed development uh, or any empowerment by having those uh, shelters um, built with brick and mortar rather if we just think of um, you know uh, understanding this community and uh, letting them develop their own uh, houses with uh, you know their uh, you know particular um, knowledge particular requirements uh, that will be a much better outcome at the end so that is the reason why this research is very important and our work was um, focusing on that so when it comes to housing design uh, housing is uh, definitely a shelter of course and uh, but then along with that the space management space design culture and value heritage and history uh, and um, anthropological considerations aesthetics local materials and skills capacity development vernacularism and preservations all are very very important so what i'm going to do over next few slides uh, talking about just taking four communities four tribes of uh, zone th zone three uh, just to show you show you what sort of um, you know houses they build and what sort of houses do they live and what is the meaning of the, those houses for those communities um, you know um, uh, whether they are common or, or or different and this is actually this work is done by one of my phd students by the name of impaline katharpi uh, in the smart villages program and uh, this is courtesy to her so i'm just bringing behalin's work uh, just to share with the audience so uh, this is a, a traditional cookie house so there are four different communities i'm going to discuss uh, here from that particular zone cookie uh, karbi dimasa and uh, labang so there are four different communities as i said 115 official tribes are in assam and more than 300 plus uh, tribes are unofficial tribes uh, still exist so i'm just taking only four tribes here just to show you how they call their um, uh, their shelter as home what what is the meaning of that so a traditional cookie house up on the uh, mountain uh, looks like this and these are all very sustainable house by the way so these are local material and, and uh, locally built so there is no any uh, money spent uh, in a way so these are all carbon neutral um, you know zero cost houses that people are living there happily and these people when they build their house uh, there are there is a there are lots of very important considerations for example uh, these cookie houses um, the, the way that they they plan the space uh, is different from the other houses so for example other communities for example they have got an entry here and then storage on the right uh, and suspended self and cooking area on the left a main hall in the center and raised plate from at the back so this is these are the uh, characters of this uh, these communities uh, in their houses then i will actually compare uh, all these um, uh, you know uh, houses the four different communities houses um, in in one slide a bit later you can see what is the meaning of that so a cookie house then if you look at uh, there are these are sectional uh, views and um, and um, you know the, this is this particular picture shows about uh, the cookie houses are not simply a single house uh, that you can really think of it is a cluster of houses 
so the one house uh, may what we have shown you is, is single house but the single house cannot be looked at as a very single entity but rather this has to be looked at as a cluster of entities because every single uh, house uh, has a very particular um, position and very particular way of connecting to the other um, space and other houses as well so as you can see the yeah, main house wood fireplace vegetation garden toilet you know back entrance tea stall house house under construction community well football field and these are all the areas all the elements that one has to consider when designing the house uh, in the village settings okay and this is very important and uh, sometimes one single dwelling could be slightly different from the others within this cluster but yet uh, the, the overall characters will be quite similar so now moving to the next one is the Kirby house. Kirby house again, this is a four, four plan here. I, it is a bit small and you can see all, all of those and this is not the purpose here just to look at every single uh, space with a microscopic view. But yet I just wanted to give you uh, kind of a, uh, you know, comparison uh, just to highlight the fact. <coughs> Sorry. highlight the fact that this every single community has got uh, different needs so this carby house uh, has got uh, a, a different kind of setup and this is the sectional view <coughs> and this is the traditional uh, look of the carby house as you can see this house is slightly different from the previous house cookie house but yet they are also made from the local materials and they are also on the on the steel as well and you can see um uh, you know uh, and again they are cluster of houses so no, not only one house because this what happens you know one family uh, tend to stay next to their um, relatives um, and then uh, family grows like that so the cluster of houses are somehow the extended families may be quite well connected to each other or even though uh, some someone new coming and building they will find a place building something very close to the other houses it's not something like um, you know uh, these people are <clears throat> basically independent of each other they are very much dependent community now uh, carby community uh, has got uh, this kind of clusters as well these clusters are again um, shown here i don't want to go into too much details but you can see that um, in again you know these are the important considerations for various um, design so traditional dimasa house looks like this that's a third community i'm talking about again uh, in a local material um, local uh, skill they have used but yet it this house looks different so the floor plan itself will be also different as well uh, this is a very much long house compared to the other houses which are uh, you know <clears throat> um, houses with uh, kind of uh, you know um, similar uh, space uh, kind of uh, you know slightly rectangular uh, than this one <coughs> sorry and this is sectional view and then finally this is the dimasa house again uh, a cluster of houses are being uh, shown here and every single cluster if you look at it that is what actually valin katapi has done uh, they are all different they all <clears throat> you know have a different characters of the clusters of the houses as well so which house goes where and where they have got you know uh, social uh, you know space and uh, other other areas they are all very much well defined within their community but if you look at very carefully they are not uh, sim similar to the others so they are all different this is lebang house lebang house uh, again the traditional house uh, looks like this as you can see uh, again the local material local skills used but yet the house uh, looks um, different from the others and again this is a rectangular house as well uh, rather than uh, i mean more than the rectangular is a long house it's a rectangular but it's, it's a long house um, and this house, how it is oriented, uh, also needs to be understood as well, and which I will show you in a, a comparative um, slide. So again, cluster of the Labang houses uh, look like this. And then if you look at here, this is the slide I'm talking about, the four different communities houses are uh, shown uh, in, in single page. As you can see, Carby houses, they are actually parallel to the street. Uh, Labang houses, they are <coughs> uh, long, uh, they are long, long side i mean short side is parallel to the street and long side is basically uh, perpendicular to the street and the uh, cookie villages are also quite similar to the carby villages uh, but uh, the massa villages are slightly different in terms of their 
a street orientation so these are some of the extracts that i have uh, to, taken from the the work done by valin the houses are not squared or cubical in volume but oblong in shape the houses are built either in 2 by 4 or 3 by 4 ratio the cookie and carby case, uh, case houses are oriented with the long side of the house facing the street while damas dimasa and labang houses are oriented with the short side facing the street entrance of the houses is directly from the street in front of the house meaning that cookie and carby house entrance was on the long side while dimasa and labang house is on the short side so these are some of the very interesting findings because these houses if you simply go and replace with brick and mortar and any orientation as you uh, as you think uh, it will be okay for the community and that is not necessarily to be the case and, and also the space itself is quite different so some families uh, some of the if you look at those uh, floor plans very carefully uh, some of the communities they will have the kitchen at the front uh, some of the communities they will have the kitchen at the back some of the communities have the male and female uh, space uh, quite separated and some of the communities will have the male and female space um, you know uh, combined together and some of the communities again may have female uh, space front male space back and some other communities will have just other way around so uh, the female space back and male space at the front so there are so many different ways of uh, you know uh, perceiving the space within the community and if we do not understand from our practitioner's point of view we cannot really build something that can retain the culture and the uh, value and the heritage of these houses so that is very important that we um, you know take uh, you know appropriate considerations for those needs and i'm talking about uh, you know mega scale here so six lakh villages across uh, india you imagine i'm i'm sure every single village will have the different uh, characteristics to stay, share so if we do not have a sincere effort to capture that information and design the houses for these communities accordingly so we will eventually lose the characters over time so <clears throat> layout and the space comparisons across these four communities here um, again uh, you know cookie carby dimasa and lavang you can see that their their space requirement is different their perception of the space is different for example if you look at here uh, cooking sleeping dry storage wet storage fireplace door window and difference in elevation so they are all different so I don't want to go into too much details at this point in time because this is not my direct work. It is under my supervision. Berlin has done the work, but uh, this uh, work will be available through our thesis and other publications as well very soon. Um, but um, uh, essentially, the point here is that this space is very important for a particular community uh, to understand. And, and that space, uh, space is something that to be taken into consideration when we are designing the floor plan for uh, these houses. Then if you look at uh, the, the common typologies of the houses across the state of Assam, there are many different typologies exist. So we call, we call mud house, Assam type house, bamboo timber house, uh, RCC concrete, of course, this is a very modern house that many people build uh, even in villages and raw brick, house, raw, raw brick houses. So these are some of the typologies that we try to, uh, you know, put together uh, what we can get as an assam. But then when we are going and modernizing these houses, we've got to really again understand uh, the characters of these houses and accordingly we have to uh, come up with the right design. <clears throat> so in, in our uh, work um, uh, at the Smart Villages Lab, we try to uh, mimic some of the uh, you know, vernacular houses with uh, modern uh, kind of uh, look. And this is a computer model, as, as I mentioned before, that we have done some uh, uh, you know, research and also come up with some models. Uh, and this is, the, this is what we have come up with. So this particular house, if you really wanted to go on a complete modernization, maybe this is the way to go. And this house looks something like this, at least from the outset. Uh, from the outside but if you wanted to really keep the vernacular look of course that uh, outside envelope could be uh, local materials which can uh, give exactly similar look but in terms of uh, the the uh, the resilience and structural stability of the houses it has to be built uh, you know uh, on the uh, solid structural system and that is where now i will show you how the steel has been used actually this houses we have uh, model uh, keeping uh, steel as our uh, structural frame <clears throat> so uh, if you look at uh, this picture here 
uh, the left hand side are all the different kinds of particular houses that has been taken from the village and right hand side is all about basically how best you can modernize them these are again computer models and as you can see the right uh, right uh, uh, picture here and we have shown you a sectional view and that uh, this house as i said <coughs> has the structural frame as the uh, you know uh, as the structural component um, uh, for this house and uh, so on the top is our uh, that steel structure uh, called lgs frame light gauge uh, steel structure that is what basically we are calling as uh, you know most uh, useful and appropriate technology uh, because these houses are sitting in a uh, very you know uh, kind of uh, some of the terrains like um, uh, very sandy they are in the shore areas, uh, which is basically the flat plain areas, and uh, you know foundation is a big problem there. And generally, the you know houses are not quite you know strong um, to withstand all the you know issues, natural uh, calamities, as I said. So it is important that we uh, design some of the structural systems. They are they are going to give them the stability and resilience. So this uh, steel frame that is you know, we have promoted uh, to to um, you know using these models as i said and we have also also done some um, um you know there's a prototype that i have built uh, just uh, you know so that effectiveness of this uh, steel structure for these houses which i'm going to show you shortly and we have also done some other analysis as well in terms of um, you know structural uh, considerations of uh, you know wind load and um you know rainfall rain, rainfall intensity and uh, also soil conditions and uh, it is feasible that it is uh, you know these houses can be modernized using steel mm -hmm. so this is a, a small model that we have built out of the um you know lgs <coughs> frame and uh, again i have shown a couple of uh, important messages here um, first, firstly, that LGS frame itself, what it is, I want to show uh, to the community uh, back in uh, rural areas, because in rural areas, what happens if you just tell them, look, we are going to build a house with steel, and they are going to say no, because they do not even think that steel is, um, uh, is a uh, housing uh, uh, product at all. Steel is a, um, uh, you know, material for building rural houses they do not think that so when it comes to steel they think about railway bunkers railway lines and you know railway stations and the big warehouses for maybe industrial warehouses this is what they have they perceive uh, steel uh, to be look like so if you are bringing the steel into their houses it is very important that you tell them look steel is simply going to give you the structural stability and this is going to still still give, just give you the structural um, frame of the house but in terms of actual fit out it could be still very local and uh, your house will still uh, you know keep the character so that is the reason why this particular uh, frame was built uh, with uh, my students at the university of melbourne and again uh, another important message that i wanted to bring here is that without any skill uh, the local people can actually put together this uh, this frame because this is all uh, coming from a, a very sophisticated machine, including the holes are punched and based on the drawings and the layouts, uh, one can erect it very, very easily. So now uh, I'm going to run this video, which is just two minutes. Uh, please enjoy. And then I'll talk about that one a bit later. Uh, uh, you know, if you have any questions about, you know, what are the other, um, you know, aspects of um, any of the elements that you need to consider further.
So in this um, uh, frame, what we have done actually, we have got the frame from uh, a, a company who is uh, promoting LGS um, uh, in Melbourne. So they had given us uh, for free this, uh, you know, um, prototype to be built. And then uh, uh, under interesting point that we have um, uh, tried to cover here is the foundation system. So uh, another company in Melbourne, they uh, promote, uh, they have their own design of uh, a very innovative foundation system called um, uh, concrete less foundation system. And the company is called SureFoot. Uh, so they are the one who has given me um, uh, the foundation solution for this particular shade. And uh, it, this foundation is, uh, you know, is a very interesting one. So it, it is just a steel plate um, and, uh, and with some holes and the holes are basically uh, used to drive <coughs> about 50 mil um, steel pipes uh, as the micro pile. So uh, the pile goes into all different directions, six or seven piles, depending on how many holes are there uh, and depending on the load of the structure. So then these these uh, piles are driven uh, using the jackhammer and finally attached to the uh, that uh, steel plate. And that actually gives a uh, very good uh, bearing capacity um, uh, depending on the, of course, soil type, because our Melbourne, this soil where I have built this particular shade uh, is a um, you know rocky soil. But uh, in Assam, of course, we have got the problems with uh, you know uh, clay and sand, especially along the um, you know soil areas, uh, the flat plain plain areas. But yet, the foundation system is very important. So in Assam, at the moment, the way the people uh, way people build the foundation. And they spend lots of uh, uh, money in the foundation alone, mainly uh, you know steel and concrete. But um, it has got lots of um, uh, you know uh, effort and skill and uh, material cost, and it takes uh, uh, quite a big chunk of uh, overall um, you know cost of the building in the foundation. So uh, and also this is not very uh, conducive in terms of the rural areas because materials are not very easily um, uh, transportable and the you know skills are not there. So we need to really find out some uh, innovative uh, uh, you know um, foundation solution as well. So that is what I was trying to um, you know bring that point here. But in the uh, hilly area where I talked about the zone three, I think this kind of foundation can work, the concreteless foundation. Imagine that, you know, if this kind of foundations can be promoted, can be proven to be uh, useful, then, uh, you know, the people, uh, rural people can uh, can build their own houses with, a, uh, with this kind of structure and which will be much more modern and much more resilient. So once that kind of um, uh, systems uh, can be in place, so it is very easy to fit out that uh, structural system with uh, local materials inside and outside so that it still looks uh, quite um, uh, like a you know original uh, village house so that is the purpose here that is the that is what the message we were trying to give and in fact after having this uh, uh, demo set built and uh, showing to many people around the um, you know uh, villages uh, people do understand that this is possible and this is something that is uh, potentially um, you know, uh, beneficial for the community in terms of building their resilient houses. <clears throat> so key components of uh, and deliver deliverables of these houses will be, of course, the local material has to be used, local skill needs to be used. Sustainable design is very important, not only in terms of uh, the material usage, but also the, um, you know, heating and cooling and um, and running expenditure of the houses as well including the carbon footprint so this is very important and quite a lot of work needs to be done by the design community to come up with uh, that kind of design which are uh, in in long run uh, cheaper and sustainable as well and uh, one of the good things about this particular system that we are promoting here which is the uh, lgs system uh, light gas steel structure uh, it it is um, uh, offshore uh, construction is possible or sorry, offset construction is possible. Prefabricated units are also possible, and uh, locally people can, um, you know, develop the skill and and build it. So it doesn't require, uh, you know, a significant amount of uh, skills, professional skills. So it is very much doable because it is very much under the control environment from the factory, and that every single element and the members are 
cut to the uh, precision and uh, once one understands uh, how uh, it, 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 it connects together, uh, one can build it. So it is a matter of basically uh, getting some basic uh, skills developed and building their own sets. <clears throat> So uh, I think a lot of work needs to be done in terms of the uh, practice and design community, uh, including the new foundation systems, uh, you know, uh, which is, um, um, you know, uh, terrain specific or uh, contextual uh, kind of design. It is very important. So I think um, uh, that is where uh, we, we are lacking some uh, big knowledge, good knowledge. So it is very important that, uh, you know, our community looks into that. And these are some of the examples that uh, we looked at different footing systems from around the world. And in fact, that uh, concreteless foundation system that this Sure Foot company is promoting in Melbourne, and they have been uh, very successful uh, in uh, building even the massive warehouses on that, side, on that kind of uh, footing systems. So I think uh, this footing definitely um, shows a, a good um, um, kind of potential uh, to be modifying and, uh, you know, uh, customizing for the need of some of those houses back in uh, Assam, at least, if not other other part. <clears throat> so, lightweight steel structure is, um, uh, is is important. Another very important thing that we try to propose here, uh, of course, showing here is the uh, you know the the blended use of steel with uh, other materials, so that you know at the end of the day, depending on what you um, uh, you know where you build and then how you want your house to be look like uh, you can give that sort of aesthetic appearance so this is important so the blended um, um, you know material usage is also important this is another uh, slide here you can see that light gauge steel structure has been used but fit out is pretty much with the local material so at the end of the day this steel is not visible so not many people know that this is built from um, steel so and this is another example as well uh, so no matter how what sort of sort of structural system you use at the end the looking has to be very much local so that is where you can see that uh, uptake of these houses will be high and uh, retention of the culture and the character will be um, uh, will be um, ensured. <clears throat> this is an example of again a bamboo fit out uh, kind of um, uh, you know um, internal shade um, uh, again with uh, blended material used. And this is again just just some pictures. They are not directly from Assam. Uh, I have taken the pictures from other parts, including some pictures from Indonesia. But these are simply the ideas that, you know, these houses can be uh, fitted with local materials to look like as these are the vernacular houses. But structural frame is still still. And this is, again, another example here. Again, this is a house with uh, steel structure, but yet with uh, quite a lot of, uh, you know, local materials being used, internal and outside um just to give you that uh, give that 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 feeling that look this is another example here so uh, what we have done in in the context of our uh, this are uh, some prototypes uh, we have actually gone out to about 37 villages in a in the river island majuli uh, at, there are about 2500 households uh, live there so we have gone into every single household across 37 villages and tried to do some uh, comprehensive uh, survey to see basically what sort of skills do they have, what sort of houses people use, what sort of materials they use. And then we have collected that information with a, in a very smart way. So we have used the uh, smart phone and an app and which we designed purpose built uh, app with all these survey questions in there. And then we have used that kind of um, you know uh, system to be able to collect the information in a very limited time. So about four months we have been out there in the field and collected that information from uh, about 2,500 households. And these are some of the uh, information that we have got in our hand when it comes to designing of those houses for those communities. We can uh, we can see basically what local materials are available, what sort of skills are there, and uh, and what people will prefer, what people would not prefer, and things things like that. <clears throat> Again, you can see the wall material normally, what sort of walls that people use or prefer versus what sort of flooring that they prefer. So these are the information that we have collected, as I said, from the community uh, with the first hand uh, data. So similarly, the energy usage, what sort of energy uh, usage currently have, what sort of energy usage they can afford and uh, are readily available energies are there, energy is there. So these are the important considerations as well for housing design. So these are the information that we have collected and our research is still ongoing, but that is what we have done so far. 
so our idea here is that in a single uh, uh, you know message that custom build customized um, uh, houses are very important uh, for every single community within the village community uh, so that their culture and value and characters are retained over time thank you